Uh, I'm here to announce that we have a winner in our contest. It is Brian R.E. Congratulations, sir. Uh, I do know that your name sounds a lot like my old buddy Brian Reynolds. Not sure if you're him. If you are, hi. If you're not, hi, just the same. You'll be getting your Cthulhu figure. I noted in passing that in the descriptions of which figure was the most awesome, a lot of you like number six. So number six is in fact the Cthulhu model that we're using for our hyperspace game, which is going to be out in stores later this year. I, the pledge manager may still be open for that if you're curious to see what it looks like and get your own ghostly floating Cthulhu, of which there's two actually in the box. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. Okay. Hey, sports fans. We're going to do a science quiz just for fun. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to show you an image and ask a question. Then you're going to have three seconds to figure out what the answer is on your own. It's going to be that short because otherwise you could just Google it and that's not fair, right? Now, you're only testing against yourself, so you decide for yourself if you got the answer right or not. Almost all of these, except for one, are based on movies that I usually like. So let's go through it and see what we got. So remember, this is movie science. Okay, so first we have astronomy. What planet did this life form come from? The movie is It, the Terror from Beyond Space. And if you ever seen this movie, you will say, huh, that's the exact same plot as Alien, because it is. So. There should be a countdown now. Three, two, one. It's from Mars. Next question. What planet did these life forms come from? This is not actually a movie, but man, I hope it gets to be one someday. There's the critters. Three, two, one. And they come from Earth. They evolved on Earth. They lived on Earth during the days of dinosaurs. And they are, of course, the great race of Yeth. What planet does this life form come from? The movie is It Conquered the World, but sadly, it did not actually conquer the world. It conquered, conquered part of a small town, though, so there's that. What planet? It didn't say how much of the world it conquered. It didn't say how much of the world it conquered. So it turns out this guy is from Venus. And the reason he has that cucumber pointed head on top is because originally he didn't have that. He was just short, low to the ground. And the leading lady laughed at him, so they added the thing on top to make him look scarier. But I'm not sure it totally worked as far as making him scary. I think he's pretty adorable. So there you go. Venus. Geography! Here is a newsreel photo of Mothra destroying New Kirk City. What nation is New Kirk City the capital of? And the answer is, as we all know... Three, two, one. Rosilica! And there's this flag. Apparently it's a combination of Russia and uh, United States to be the bad guy to oppress Mothra. Next geography. What nation is Count Dracula a citizen of? Three, two, one. The novel was written in 1897. Dracula's castle is in Austria-Hungary. He is a citizen of Austria-Hungary. If he'd made it to 1914, he could have been drafted to fight in the war. Well, maybe he's too old. Okay, geography. I love this movie. They, re they never redid it as Red Dragon, but the original Manhunter was fabulous. Uh, what city did this serial killer, who was called the Tooth Fairy, operate out of? It's a prequel to Silence of the Lambs, in a sense. Well, the book is. And the answer is that he is in St. Louis, the city I was born in, and that's why I thought that was cool. Biology. There's a movie from 1942 called The Mad Monster, and this character is an animal. What is the animal? Three, two, one. The scientist reports in the movie, he says, this is a complete genetic transference of man to wolf. So that is a 100% wolf. Conga, 1961. What animal is this? Three, two, one. I know what you're thinking, but you're not right. Well, maybe you are right if you thought it was a chimpanzee, because that's what this is. So not only is it a chimpanzee, but there is an awesome subplot in which the mad scientist um, is he's keeping his lab assistant on tenterhooks, promising to marry her, then not marrying her, then promise to marry her, then eventually that there's murder and stuff. But anyway, that's Conga, the chimp. 
Um, he originally is a chimp, then he's a guy in a gorilla suit, then he's this, which is a guy in like a different gorilla suit, but it's a, it's a chimp. Biology, humanoids from the deep, Roger Corman. Uh, what animal is this? I love this movie, of course, because not only does it have what amount to deep ones, but these are deep ones that are actually trying to have sex with women because none of them evolved in, in this one is because the, no females evolved. So, Three, two, one. turns out that these are salmon. So, um, I guess that means if you cut one open, the meat will be red and tasty. I don't know. Anyway, there it is. Salmon. Paleontology. Okay, so King Dinosaur is a movie I saw when I was 11. I was super excited to see it because it's on an alien planet. There's astronauts and there's dinosaurs. I was so excited. And this is before I knew that there was good and bad movies. There's only movies I liked with like cowboys or dinosaurs. And there's movies I didn't like because there was like kissing parts. <clears throat> well, I was excited to see this. And then I learned for the first time that there was another differential movie besides topic. There was good and bad because I really hated this movie. And one of the reasons I hated it is that this dinosaur is described in, the, and I quote, it is identical to the Tyrannosaurus Rex of ancient Earth as an 11 year old kid i knew that was bogus because that is not a tyrannosaurus rex another paleontology thing this one i loved so there's a movie called the deadly mantis in which a giant prehistoric mantis comes to eat us all which of course is happens all the time so this is the shows the evolutionary track that our ancestors followed they show these three things the tentacle thing the dinosaur and then the caveman or maybe it's the mammoth i don't know the question is what is the name of our ancestor in the leftmost image I know that it looks like you can read it, but just bear with me. Three, two, one. It turns out that the leftmost image is claimed in the text to be a jellyfish. This despite the fact that the actual label says giant squid. I'm not sure if the, uh, the author just didn't care, uh, or the art actor when he said it and they didn't bother to read it, but it like, so anyway, they know how we evolved jellyfish or maybe a squid Dinosaur Man, that was the route. Okay, another paleontology. There is a pretty cool dinosaur movie from 1948 called Unknown Island, which has fabulous practical effects dinosaurs, which are a dude in a dinosaur costume, which is always great. This monster chases the heroes around all through the, the thing, and what is he? Well, of course, you can tell easily he is a giant sloth. He's really active and fast, though, for a sloth, and he's clearly carnivorous, so not all scientists realize that giant sloths were carnivorous. I just thought that would be an interesting point. History. Okay. When did the first all-out nuclear war happen? Three, two, one. It turns out we had it August 19th, 1966. Whew, glad those days are gone. When will the world be conquered by fire-breathing dragons? Which, by the way, one thing I didn't like about this movie was that they had this stupid thing where there was one male dragon and all the rest are females. No species could possibly function like that. It's ludicrous. When will the, when are the world going to be conquered by the dragons? Three, two, one. 2010. So I guess we're 10 years into their reign. I like that, that, that for a change, they're burning down um, uh, Parliament instead of uh, the Capitol building. When did Earth first make contact with aliens? Three, two, one. This was not only a movie, but a TV show that I actually watched some episodes of. I think my favorite episode was when the human was trying to get the, make the alien girl understand the Stooges. And so she's watching the Three Stooges on TV, and she kept saying things like, these are terrible repairmen. I would never, I would never hire them. So uh, that was pretty great. N 1988, that's when the aliens came. Now you know. Unless you count the earlier ones, like it conquered the world in 1956, stuff like that. But this is... You know, everyone knew about these aliens because look, they're wearing suits and ties. Chemistry. Here's four awesome mad scientists, which I recommend all these movies. A is the Invisible Man, starring Claude Rains, who you only see in the very last scene when he's dead. B is one of the best versions I know of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Frederick March. Same guy in those two pictures. Third, C, is The Brain That Wouldn't Die, which is really gory for a 60s movie. I really like this. This might be my favorite of the four. And then D, which is, uh, I said it was Frankenstein's daughter on the side. Oops, sorry about that. This is actually um, The Bride of Frankenstein, not Frankenstein's daughter. But the question is, which of these scientists used duo cane in his experiments? Three, two, one. It's a tropical drug that removes color from flesh. So of course it's the mad scientist, it's the mad scientist, Claude Ra Dr. Griffin, Claude Rains and the Invisible Man who used it 
an, a, a derivative of it to turn himself invisible. So there it is. Also, fun fact, of all the Universal Monster characters, the Visible Man killed more people than any other, except possibly Dracula, who's been around for hundreds of years. But you see him kill more guys on the screen. He actually wrecks a train and kills like 200 people. Just right there, there's 200 people. He kills like 30 cops. He's great. Okay, in Jurassic Park, in the book and the movie, the scientists put a special gene in the dinosaurs so their cells couldn't make their own lysine. This means the dinosaurs depended upon dietary lysine in order to survive. The idea being that if they escaped and started eating like people or dogs like they do in the movie that eventually they would die out because they couldn't get lysine. So here's the question. What rare food stuff contains dietary lysine? Three, two, one. Well, it turns out that every food stuff, that every food stuff that has amino acids, which is all meat, all vegetables, all fruit, all nuts, all grains, have lysine in them because lysine is one of the building blocks of amino acids. So like you cannot, it's really hard to make a diet that doesn't have lysine. You'd have to feed them nothing but like salt and water. So lysine is, I mean, even if you just ate pepper, there's lysine in that. So he picked, uh, Michael Crichton picked kind of a bad choice for keeping the dinosaurs from breeding because literally all they got to do is eat people to get the lysine. More chemistry. What poison does this man suffer from? This is from an awesome movie called The Mad Doctor of Blood Island, which I really, really like. It's from the Philippines, too. And this guy, of course, you've probably seen this before. This is chlorophyll poisoning. And this is the chlorophyll man. He's super violent. His greatest flaw as a monster is that when the camera goes to him, it zooms in and out, back and forth, and it kind of makes you nauseous. More science people. I saw this movie when I was a kid. It's the abominable Dr. Fives, played by Vincent Price, and it is the greatest movie about an art deco character that plays on the organ and kills people I've ever seen. What is this man's doctorate in? He's got two doctorates. If you name both, you're really cool. One of them is music, and the other, theology. There's a great scene where Joseph Cotton says, for God's sake, Fives, and Fives says, God is on my side. And of course, since he is you know, doctorate in theology, I guess he'd know. More science people. What is this man's degree in? Not the one in the can, the, uh, the one with the glasses. Three, two, one. Well, at the time of this image of the thing, he does not have a degree. He's still an undergrad. But later on, he actually got an MD and served in World War II. So uh, World War I, rather, in the book. World War, I don't know what any, if he served in a war and thing. But yeah, he eventually becomes a, a medical doctor. Not sure what a specialty is. Deadology, I guess. Okay, what is this man's degree in? Three, two, one. Dr. No, of course, has a degree in nuclear <sighs> physics. Because why wouldn't he? By the way, his right hand there is artificial. And in the movie, it's super strong, so he can threaten James Bond more. So I mean, that's always a good thing. And like all classic villains, he's having a dinner. Looks like what he gets is some grapes to eat is all, but so I don't know about that. <sighs> with three different kinds of cocktails glasses, so that's cool. Bonus question, the last question. According to this picture, where does Mary Poppins take place? Ha, I, you guys probably thought it was London, huh? Three, two, one. But you are plainly wrong because that is an American Robin, not a British Robin. So Mary Poppins must have taken place in America. And there you are. There are my movies. I hope you guys saw some movies that you're interested in. I hope you had fun taking the quiz. I had fun giving it. And that is Sandy Peterson signing off.